This is the new M2 MacBook Air, but right out of the box, it's a little bland. So here are the 14 things I did to get it from looking like this to looking like this, which is not only prettier, but is also much easier to use and seriously boosts my productivity. Okay, so the very first thing that I did was to put the display on more space. I just feel like everything is unnecessarily large in the default setting, so I'd really recommend trying out the more space if you can still see everything comfortably on your screen. It just lets you display more things at once, which will give you more context on whatever you're reading or looking at, and that really helps me be able to scrub through things more quickly. Um, it also helps with multitasking. So I usually have many windows open at once on my screen, but the macOS default window split screen kind of sucks. Having to press and hold on the little green button just takes way too long. And you also have to do this whole dance when you want to open up something different in the split screen. And not to mention it can only do left and right split. So an app that I download immediately on a new Mac is called Rectangle. This thing is free and open source and you can set a bunch of keyboard shortcuts to very quickly snap your windows. There's a bunch of different size options here. So yeah, this app is super helpful and great. And if you use a mouse, I highly recommend checking out Linear Mouse. This is a free software that will let you change your mouse scrolling direction independent from the trackpad. You can also use it to disable your mouse acceleration and also set a hotkey to temporarily increase the scroll rate. And this is actually super useful for scrolling through very long articles. And by default, the menu bar on the Mac doesn't really do much, but I found a few apps that will make the menu bar a lot more useful. And the first one is called Mackey, and this is probably the best clipboard manager that I found. It's also open source. You can search in it. It can not only copy text, but also files and images. And this is especially useful when I need to copy and paste a bunch of things, because instead of having to copy and paste them one by one and having to flip through all my windows, I can just copy everything at once and then paste everything at once using the Mackey tool. I take lots of screenshots, but most of the time I don't save them to my computer because I only need them temporarily. So I would just save them to my clipboard. However, the default keyboard shortcut for saving a screenshot to a clipboard is pretty complicated. So I just remapped it to a much simpler option shift S and this makes things much easier. I honestly don't get why the default shortcut for this thing is so convoluted. And the second app is called CalcBar. So this is a calculator in the menu bar and it's faster than opening up any other calculator. And it can do all sorts of math, not just addition and subtraction, but also things like sine, cosine, natural log. Especially for me as a student, this thing is very useful. Okay, and the third app is called Be Focused. So this is a Pomodoro timer that sits in the menu bar. You can edit the intervals and also the sounds. And again, you know, for me as a student, this is super useful. Okay, and the fourth app is for those of you who don't like the notch on this new design. There's an app called Top Notch that will actually hide the notch and pretty much makes it look like you have a thicker bezel, but you're actually not wasting any screen space because the menu bar does sit on top of the blacked out space. All right, and now let's do some fun customizations and starting with the wallpapers. The default wallpapers are kind of meh. So I like to go on this site called unsplash.com to look for some new wallpapers. This site has very high quality images. It's also very easy to download them. There's no like weird pop-up ads or anything. And after some searching, I decide to go for this one. I really like the blue color and there's also lots of empty space at the top, which is perfect for the widgets that I want to put there. And as for my desktop widgets, so these are my three favorite ones. And the first one is called Weather Widget. So there's a few different designs that you can choose from, but this is the one that I went with. You can change the size of this, also drag it wherever you like, and you can lock down the position. And the second one is called Flip Clock. I think this one is really cute. I just put it in the center of my screen right underneath the notch and then I also just played around with the settings a little bit to my liking. And the third one is called Mini Calendar Widget and it's exactly what its name is. This thing is just a mini calendar. I like having a full month calendar at a glance on my desktop so I just put this thing on the bottom left corner of my desktop and I also color matched it to my wallpaper. Okay, and the next thing that I did was to set some hot corners, and you can do that underneath the mission control and then click on hot corners. 
There's a bunch of options to choose from. One that I went with is the start screensaver. Um, that would just start the screensaver. And the second thing is show desktop. And this thing is actually very useful because I save lots of things directly on my desktop. So whenever I'm texting someone or I'm working on a document and there's something that I need for my desktop, I can just very quickly make it show my desktop and then grab whatever file I need and then return to what I was working on and insert the file in. And as for the screensavers, so there's actually two default ones that I really like. The Monterey and Hello look really cool, but I also found a few third-party ones. And the first one is called Flip Clock. So there's a lot more to this app, but I'm just going to use it as a screensaver. This one is the only one that's available for free, so I'm gonna download that. And there's also a few more settings that you can change in the screensaver options. And yeah, so this is what it looks like. It's just a pretty simple flip clock. And the second one is this like Apple Watch inspired one. There's a few different options that you can choose from, but this extra large one is my favorite one. And I also just set the color to purple. So yeah, now when this screensaver is on, it kind of looks like a giant Apple Watch. And this last one is called Grid Clock. There's not really any settings to change for this one. Um, I think it looks super clean and minimal. And yeah, I just think it looks really cool. Okay, so because I save lots of things to my desktop, there are a few things that I do to just make sure that it stays organized. And the first one is to customize my folder icons just so that they're not like the default blue icon, just so that it looks cuter and matches with my wallpaper. I couldn't really find any icons I liked online, so I actually made the this cloud icon myself. And yeah, it looks super cool. This will be available to my channel members to download. And as for organization, so obviously I put some things into folders, but not everything. And for the things that I don't put in folders, I just use this very nice trick called Ustacks that would just automatically group all the similar things together. So right now my images and movies are two separate groups. If you're not already using this, definitely give it a try. It just makes organization so fast and easy. Okay, and the next thing I do is to edit my finder a little bit. So I go into my finder preferences and then I just edit my sidebar to what I want. You can actually also add folders directly into your sidebar, which is pretty nice and handy. Um, but for now, I am not going to add anything. And one more thing that I do is to go into the view and then check the show path bar and also show status bar. And now I can always see the path. So I always know like where I am. And also the status bar is just a quick way for me to see how many items I have and also the amount of storage that I have left. So yeah, that's it for my finder. And there's actually one more thing that's very useful that I wanna show you guys. And that is under the trackpad in the system settings and then more gestures. So by default, uh, all of the gestures are turned on except for the app Explorer. Jose, but that one is actually very useful, especially if you often have lots of windows open at once. So for me, I always have lots of Chrome windows open and usually lots of them are minimized as well. So it can get pretty hard to find the one that I need. But with the app Expose enabled, when I'm in Chrome, I can swipe down with three fingers to see all of my Chrome windows, including the ones that are minimized. So this makes navigating between my windows a lot easier. All right, so in addition to the desktop widgets, you can also add widgets into to the notification center. You usually don't see these things, you'll only see them if you click right here, but still I decided to add a few of my favorite ones. So the first one is called Pixel Widget. This app doesn't really offer too many options, but one that I really like is this year in progress one. You can customize the color, font, and text. So yeah, this is the one that I went with. And the second app is this really cute one called Bears. It's for making countdown widgets, and there's just lots of these super cute bear graphics that you can choose from. I really like this one. And the last one that I want to tell you guys is called Widgy. So with this, you can actually create your own widgets, which is cool, but also a lot of work. So I didn't do that. But instead, I went into the Explore tab and I just looked at what other people made. There can be some really cool and unique ones here. So, you know, if you're interested, definitely take a look. And I found this one that shows me the battery percentage and the date. And um, along with this really cute bear in iPhone graphic, so after making all of my widgets, I just went into my notification center and first just cleared out all the widgets in there and then added in the ones that I just made. This is what I ended up with. I didn't put too many there because again, you know, I don't see this that often. So I just didn't bother. 
All right, so earlier I downloaded a bunch of menu bar apps, but now it's time to kind of clean up the menu bar a little bit. So I went into my system preferences and then dock and menu bar and took a look at everything that was available there and just decided if I wanted to keep it in the menu bar or move it into my control center. And in general, I prefer my menu bar to be you know, like more clean and minimal. So I ended up only keeping a few things in my menu bar, the things that I use the most, and then everything else, they're either just not displayed at all or they're in my control center. But also I made sure to check the show percentage for the battery. I feel like that definitely should be checked by default, but it isn't, you know, knowing your battery percentage is quite important. And along with that, I just played around with the dock. So the first thing I did was actually to clean it up because by default, there's just way too many things there. And again, I prefer my dock to be on the more minimal side. So only like the apps that I use the most often are there. Uh, so I ended up just chucking a bunch of the default apps away and I actually just like straight up deleted them as well. And after doing that, I then played around with the dock settings. I kind of changed the size a little bit, prefer it on the larger side. And and I also really like this magnification effect. I think it looks really cool. So just added some of that. And then I also made sure to check the minimize windows into application icon, because if you don't check that, then all of the minimize windows will actually sit on the dock. And especially if you have lots, which I do, uh, the dock can get like really long and messy really fast. And I also checked the automatically hide and show dock icon. And this way, when I don't need the dock, it's not there taking up extra screen space. So normally, I have like about half an inch more screen space, which is nice. Uh, and then of course, when I need the dock, you know, it's there. And lastly, I just changed a few other like miscellaneous settings in my system preferences. Uh, the first one is that I changed my little avatar picture. Uh, this thing is the thing that greets me when I first open up my MacBook. So I like to change it to something nice, something that will spark joy. <laughs> There's lots of like fun poses as well. And this is actually animated when you first open the screen. So it's kind of fun. You can also change like the background color as well. So yeah, this is the Memoji that I went with. And then I just went to the general and I did a few changes. Uh, I made the accent and highlight color purple because that's my favorite color right now. And since I'm a Google Chrome user, I just made sure the default web browser is set to Google Chrome and not something else like Safari. And the last thing that I do is a more personal thing, but it's something that I just need. So under battery and then battery again, by default, the turn display off after is set to like barely a minute, which is just way too little for me. And it becomes really annoying when I keep on having to touch my MacBook in order to make sure it doesn't fall asleep. So I usually like set it to somewhere around an hour. Um, that's pretty good for me. Uh, and I just do the same thing under the power adapter. So yeah, those are the first 14 things that I do in order to get my new Mac uh, to my liking. If you enjoyed this video, you can click over here to watch me unbox this thing. I will be making more videos on this, including a review. So be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss those. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And here are the rest of my social media platforms. You can follow me on those if you would like to. And yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I really hope to see you in another one of my videos. Bye.